Hi, my name is Polly Salvajan, and I'm here to talk about abortion. My speaker's main claim is that allowing women the right to abortion has a positive impact in our society as a whole. Her secondary claims are, are that abortion decreases crime rates, abortion benefits taxpayers, and finally that abortion gives women an opportunity to contribute to society and their household. I start off with her first claim that abortion decreases crime rates. The evidence that the speaker uses from Stephen Levitt and John Donahue with statistics about the change in crime rates in low, medium, and high abortion states is outdated because it is only about abortion and crime rates from 1985 to 1997. The fact that this evidence is outdated hurts her argument that abortion decreases crime rates because it is over 13 years old and the rates have probably fluctuated, with, which could impact her argument. Also, Christopher Foote of the Federal Reserve of Boston states that Donahue and Levitt only saw a drop in violence in high crime states rather than high abortion states. Foote says that when they test for the significance of abortion, when they test for that, the significance of abortion falls out. Next is her second claim that abortion benefits taxpayers. On this claim, there isn't enough evidence. All that is given in the outline is a chart about the lower abortion rates from 1991 to 2005, which is again outdated. But also, recently it was brought out that in President Obama's health care plan, there would be taxpayer-funded abortions. Penny Starr, a senior staff writer at CNS News, writes in her article that taxpayer money would be used to pay for abortions in the government-run health care option. This, my speaker states that abortion would lower the financial burden of taxpayers and the state because the children wouldn't be on welfare and in turn be, end up being supported by the taxpayers' money. But now with the new health care plan, the taxpayers are going to pay regardless. <coughs> this information greatly hurts her argument because it, it complete, completely undermines one of her secondary claims. And lastly, her third claim that abortion gives women an opportunity con to contribute to society and their household. She talks about how single parenthood is the link to poverty, but since abortion is widely available now, this isn't relevant to her main claim. If the people were poor to begin with, and they knew that they weren't going to be able to support the child, then they would have had the abortion, and maybe that would have been easier for them. And the evidence that she uses to support this claim has to do with New Zealand and with their percentage of single parent families. This evidence isn't relevant to the single parent families in the United States because the poverty lines and many other things greatly differ between the two countries. Also, she states that when men have experienced the absence of their father when growing up, they fear intimacy. This claim isn't necessarily true, and there isn't much evidence that can cause this conclusion. In conclusion, the argument that allowing women the right to abortion has a positive impact in our society as a whole has some refutable points. For example, the outdated evidence from her first secondary claim, the lack of evidence and counterclaim that the taxpayers are now going to pay for abortions from her second secondary claim, and the in insufficient signs about single parenthood and fear of intimacy from her third secondary claim. Thank you. structural stuff is easy to follow. Um, you're fine there. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, your criticism on the first point uh, seems to be about um, wait a second. Oh, on, on the crime rates. I thought that was a you know, part of the best part of your argument was the the specific challenge that you had from the one guy who evaluated the study, noting that the uh, change in the crime was correlated with high crime states and not high abortion states, and I think that that undermines the legitimacy of the inference that the advocate's presenting on that point. I thought that was the, the clearest application of a piece of information that you developed to the advocate's argument in your presentation. 
Other than that, there's a lot of presses on things, uh, but I don't think there's uh, nearly as much convincing evidence. And there are a couple places I think you miss opportunities for good counterclaims. So, for instance, you talked about the uh, Obama health care plan ultimately ending up paying for uh, taxpayer abortions, and so as a consequence, there there is going to be a cost there. But of course, that assumes that. Um, you know, abortions always save money instead of costing money. For example, each one of those people that is not produced is a potential taxpayer, a productive uh, contributor to society who is uh, advancing the um, economy in some way, and each of us represents uh, some economic investment. And you don't even talk about that issue. You're talking about uh, the pennies in comparison to a lifetime uh, based on the amount of money that we might spend uh, funding some abortions. And I just don't think you get much out of that argument. On the third point, <coughs> um, you, you have a challenge to the comparison of the New Zealand data to the United States. That's an okay challenge. Uh, but I'm not sure that uh, you explain it very clearly. And then you've got this assertion that the emotional link is really not uh, true, and you don't have any data on that point. So I think that that's a little bit iffy. So you, you follow the structure well, you put in, in some good presses, you had one, I think, really strong argument, you missed an opportunity for an even stronger argument on the second point, and then, you know, like I said, just a couple of presses at the end. I thought though that your summary was really solid, trying to explain why it is that we shouldn't accept the conclusion there, and uh, sometimes that is going to be important. Like in the debates that we do down the road, if you can summarize the position of your side in the debate really effectively, even if all of your arguments don't, uh, you know, they're not perfect, in listening to the way they're contrasted to the other side, that's a, that's a very strong point to make. So I think it'll work well for you there. All right, thank you.